or not. Uh, they don't make other decisions besides that. We're in a position where we can either do that and remand it back if, if we think they erred or affirm it if we think they did not. Uh, but we also have another area where we can actually take the authority of the Planning Commission and make a decision, decision ourselves to either approve, disapprove, put conditions on it. If we're going to do that, we have to have a full hearing with all the facts. We can't limit it to the three items listed because that's not the full case. And if we're going to take the authority of the Planning Commission, we have to hear the whole case. I, I object to that. Um uh, interpretation. I think that, uh, respectfully, Mr. Martin, that, that that's erroneous as a matter of law, that um, under this board's uh, procedures that a petition of appeal is required, the issues to be litigated before this board have to be stated. What de novo means, and I think Mr. Martin stated this correctly, as to the factual findings in connection with the issues raised and before this board, this board does have authority to make its own factual findings as if it were the Planning Commission. That does not broaden the jurisdiction of this uh, board to consider any issue it wants outside of those raised. And, and frankly, the reason for this board's rule is very practical. I've got people here tonight to testify on the roads issue. I don't have people here to testify as to every conceivable issue that somebody might stir up in connection with an extensive subdivision plan. That's why this uh, board's rules, and I would submit like every other agency that sits as an appellate administrative agency like this board, mm -hmm. requires that you file a petition of appeal and state your grounds and limit the hearing. We could have a trial or a hearing before this board for weeks if we're completely unlimited by the contents of the petition of appeal. And I appreciate your pa patience and I'll stand down. Thank you. One, one quick follow-up. If uh, if we can't hear the whole case, then I'm not comfortable taking the authorities of the Planning Commission, which means we'd be limited to either saying, yes, the appeal is valid, no, it's not. And that would limit our, our recourse, because if we don't hear the whole case, we can't make a, you know, a good decision in place of the Planning Commission. So I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you want to jump in on anything or anything to add? Well, I think the thing to remember is that it's an appeal. Mm -hmm. There are other jurisdictions where, for example, you have a hearing officer. The hearing officer make, makes a decision. That can be appealed. And that case can be heard de novo by a board of appeals. And it's actually as if the hearing examiner did not make a decision at all. Mm -hmm. All of the cases heard, everything's anew again. Right. Everyone can introduce different evidence than they introduced before. But in an appeal situation, because of the rule that requires the specificity of the grounds, mm -hmm. then it would only seem logical that the reason for that is so that all parties are on notice about what's being appealed. And again, there's, it doesn't say you're only allowed three grounds or five grounds. You're allowed as many grounds as you want to set forth. But I do think that in order to give that sentence meaning that when those grounds are specified, then those would be the grounds that the, in this mm -hmm. case, the appellants, would offer evidence on. Now, the significance of the de novo aspect is that having identified the grounds, then they are not bound to what they did or did not do before the commission before. They can bring up entirely new evidence that the commission never saw. They can bring up uh, entirely new facts that the commission never saw. That's the significance of the de novo aspect. When you have an on-the-record appeal, you cannot bring up aspects that were not brought before the body that first heard the case. But in the de novo appeal, the significance again of de novo is that on the issues that have been identified, they have the ability to bring up any and all facts related to those issues again, mm -hmm. whether or not those were heard by the entity below. So as a question for you, um, if, if I am in interpreting what your advice is here, um, what I'm hearing is we could um, we ought to limit testimony to those topics that were appealed. Um, I guess my question then is, to what extent should testimony be allowed to show aggrievement um, or, or uh, you know, standing uh, if, if that standing is not specifically on target for those topics of appeal? Um, if, the, if it was agreed by the person offering the evidence that you're not to consider what they're saying as a basis upon which to make a decision, but only in terms of considering 
what standing they may have. I don't know if that was articulated, but if right. that's going to be articulated by the parties offering the evidence, then you could hear it for purposes of standing if you decide that you want to know that issue. Now, um, people are being allowed to testify what they want to say about things. I don't know that the board would want to allow people to testify, and they've been allowed to testify on the issues that have been articulated without objection. I don't know that the board is going to allow all, everyone to testify who wants to. They all address the three issues that have been identified. And then at the end, some kind of motion or something is made that they don't have standing, and then the board is going to, in effect, strike all of that testimony. Mm -hmm. So it's not clear to me what the, how the standing issue is going to relate to what evidence you all hear mm -hmm. that relates to the three issues identified by the parties. Right. And so if we limit testimony to the three issues on appeal, we are in effect saying that other issues, for instance, soil erosion as, as a token issue, is something that has been um, addressed in the Planning Commission decision, and that's not something that really is, that we should be focused on. Well, not exactly. Right. Um, for purposes of what's before you all, what your topics are that you have to make decisions on, it's the topics that were identified by the appellants when they filed their appeal. So whether or not the Planning Commission addressed other subject matters, whether or not they addressed other subject matters correctly, is not something that's before you since the appellants are required to state their grounds when they filed their appeal. And as again, as I've said before, it would seem that the only reason that that sentence would have significance is if they would be limited to those grounds. And again, they're not limited when they come up with their appeal, they're, they're creating it. What do they want to appeal? They could appeal every single decision made by the Planning Commission regarding any topic that they uh, decided to rule on. In this case, they identified three topics. Looking to my colleagues here to see if there are any other thoughts. <laughs> I, I, I can understand um, what's being said here. Um, now, Mr. Fisher's right. I mean, he's not prepared for these other issues. But by the same token, if that's the case, then we need to limit ourselves to either uh, upholding the decision or uh, basically denying it and remanding it back because without the entire case, we can't act as a planning commission, right? So if we want to limit ourselves, then I wouldn't have a problem with it, but I do if we're going to make other decisions besides whether we uphold or or not the, their decision. Mm -hmm. Now, you don't have to remand if you disagree with the decision of the Planning Commission. If the evidence as presented by the appellants convinces you that the um, Planning Commission made a mistake on the Roberts Rules of Order, made a mistake on the um, roads, made a mistake regarding not allowing the people to testify, you, can, you have the authority to simply reverse the decision. You, you, as um, Mr. Fisher has articulated, you can say we don't care what the Planning Commission decided on in terms of the um, road adequacy or the law. It's really kind of, I don't think you can, you can divorce mm -hmm. the road adequacy from the law that addresses that issue, mm -hmm. 75 A, B, and C. But if you, dis if you find that uh, there's something about the subdivision plan within the topics that you disagree with the Planning Commission and you're basing that disagreement on the evidence presented before you, that's a significance of a de novo appeal. You have the authority to do that. You can decide that the um, subdivision application is denied for whatever the reason is based on the facts that you've heard on the topics that have been articulated. Hmm. Got it. So um, I, uh, my thought, Mr. Martin, uh, you, you raise a, 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 a a point that we discussed, I think, in our last hearing, which is, you know, how how would we dispose of this appeal um, uh, at the end? <laughs> and my my thinking on that it really is the same as I think it was uh, back in April, which is, I don't want to cross that bridge until we we hear the evidence that people 
didn't get a chance to present the first time. Um, so I may agree with you at the end, and I may not agree with you, Ann, and, and that's okay. Uh, but I think that uh, it would be premature for us to limit or expand testimony just depending on how we might dispose of the question later. Um, well, the, the problem... If you don't mind me interrupting, uh, the, the problem with that, though, is we have to make a decision now on whether she can bring up new stuff right. or not. And if we don't allow it, right. then we are limited. And uh, right, you know, th that's my concern. Is, I hear uh, you. We either have to open it up or keep our, our lanes closed. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, as it relates to issue three, which was that they weren't allowed to testify, there's been no testimony from this witness yet that... Um, I attempted to testify. I was told I couldn't. And, that, and if I had been able to, I would have spoken on the following subjects. The witness mm. has not said that yet. Mm. So we don't know mm -hmm. whether or not the basis, although it was articulated by her counsel, the board hasn't been shown yet that she was not given the right to testify. And therefore, if she, uh, because of that reason, right. She couldn't speak, and these are the topics she would have spoken mm. about, and she would like you to take those into account. Mm. Let me object 